Howdy folks, coming at you today with another article review. This time it's about the real benefit of 100% code coverage. No, it isn't only to be proud of ourselves, says the author. I thought for a moment that I should be like introducing the author's name and then I saw the author's name and I thought there's no way I'm gonna pronounce this correctly. Adrian Girrett is uh, what I think it is. But please forgive me if I'm wrong, because I'm probably wrong. It's normal today to test your code base. Any company whose business is based on technological solutions has implemented an automated testing solution. We're all in agreement on that. Now the question is, what should we test? In this article, we're not going to talk about the different types of tests. We're not going to talk about the difference between unit testing, integration testing, or end-to-end -end testing. End -to -end testing. Instead, we're going to talk about a much more controversial topic, test coverage, and why a 100% code coverage is, good, is a good idea you should set up in your team. Look at that beautiful, beautiful 100%. You know it's good because it's green. Good coverage does not imply good tests. Definitely. Before starting, let's be clear. This is the most common point for 100% code coverage detractors. A covered code does not mean it's well tested. And they quote, it's better to have 50% of the project tested correctly than 100% poorly tested. This is correct. It's useless, even counterproductive, to write tests only to write tests. I strongly agree with this. In this article, when we speak about covered code, we assume it's correctly tested code. This argument, even if it's valid, is off topic. As a reminder, the real question here is what to test, not how to test. Now that's clear. We can go back to the initial topic, 100% code coverage. Code coverage below 100% doesn't lead to questioning. Let's imagine a project in which the code coverage limit is set to 80%. When running the test suites, all is green and the actual code coverage is 85%. Perfect. Now imagine we need to develop a new feature. The developer in charge does their best and writes some tests. Your code can't fail unit tests if you don't write any unit tests. Very smart. Despite these new tests, the code coverage drops to 84.5%. What's the meaning of this lost half point? The new feature is probably not fully tested, but it is something to but is it something to worry about? To know more, we need to analyze updated files, but some of the code already wasn't fully co covered, making this task harder. This research time is not motivating since in any case everything is green for the CI. This is true. There's not enough friction in place to uh, motivate people to really look into the issues, there's much more likely that they're going to go, well, I really wish I had time to look at these issues, but I don't. So let's just get this PR merged in and slowly by slowly, your test coverage number drops. With the code coverage limit set to 80%, this information that coverage has dropped slight slightly is likely to be lost. Losing 0.5% is really not that much. And once again, all tests passed and the CI says everything is okay without any warnings. So why bother? A coverage set below 100% leads to two things, loss of information and less accountability. That's a pretty good point. I, I, I will concede that's a very good point that when you start making arbitrary numbers, it's easy to blur the edges. 100% code coverage is a safety net. Let's take the same situation, but this time with code coverage limits set to 100%. The new feature is developed the exact same way with the exact same tests, only the code coverage limit differs. After the development of the feature, the global code coverage still decreases, but this time the new value is 99.8%. Everything is red Everything is red, and the merge is blocked. Ew, ugly. Yellow, red, ugh. Well, yellow, you don't have to worry about. Those are probably just warnings. Red, those are errors. You got to worry about those. That was a joke. The warning is triggered, and we must therefore analyze why the code coverage is no longer at 100%. Here are two cases here, two cases are possible. We have forgotten to test an important scenario, or it's something we consider useless to test. In the first case, we are glad to have been warned. We write the missing test, code coverage goes back to 100%, everything is green again, and our application is more robust. In the second case, rather than writing a useless test, we prefer at open classrooms to ignore the corresponding lines. So it's something we consider useless to test. Since everything is supposed to be green, files not fully covered are clearly visible. So that's interesting. They purposefully ignore the, the, the lines of code that they don't want tested so that that code coverage number sticks at 100%. So technically, it's not 100% code coverage. But for their purposes, what's important to them is that 
that 100% is such a powerful number that you're not going, if, if you write code that matches one of these two cases, um, you have to, you have to specifically make a decision whether you should write tests for it or whether you're going to ignore that line of code because it doesn't need to be tested. I like that. Don't hesitate to ignore your code. This e the easy shortcut when speaking about 100% code coverage is to think we must test every if and every optional parameter. No, we have to use common sense and only test what needs to be tested. 100% code coverage does not mean that 100% of the lines are covered, but that 100% of the code which must be tested is actually tested. It, at Open Classrooms, this leads to multiple Istanbul ignore next. So they just have a bunch of ignore next. Of course, the idea is not to ignore everything. When we add a new ignore in the code, we have to justify it when reviewing the pull request. When a piece of code is ignored, it is always explicitly and intentionally ignored. I think that's very important. So yes, our 100% code coverage is falsely 100%. We assume it. Thanks to this fake 100%, we know that everything important is tested. We receive warnings when the code coverage is not perfect, and ignored lines are clearly marked as such. In short, we don't lose any information. So when do you start? That said, setting the coverage limit to 100% is not the same challenge in all projects. It's obviously easier to set up on new or smaller projects. It's another story on older or bigger projects. It can even be inappropriate. At Open Classrooms, on the front end side, the 100% code coverage is set only on our small libraries, like our collection of UI components and our API or our API client. The main website, which will soon turn 10 years old, is not concerned by 100% coverage and will not be anytime soon because all of it is legacy code. As always with our job, this is a matter of pragmatism. There are no rules to blindly follow. We just have to do our best according to our needs and constraints. In short, be pragmatic. Yeah, that's pretty good. But the author is kind of making the point of the 100% code coverage detractors. But it's even better because they're making the point, like they're taking the argument that those code coverage detractors are making, which is what I'm, I've been on that side before. So they're taking that argument and, and saying, yeah, you're right. But we can still have 100% code coverage for certain things. And yeah, I really like that. <laughs> yes that all the way. So that's the article. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'll ha leave a link to it in the description below. Um, curious to hear your thoughts and uh, whether you believe that no, every line of code should be covered or you think that the idea of 100% coverage, even using the ignore, is just still too impractical and doesn't really address the issue, which I guess in your mind would be people are just going to use ignore when they don't want to write tests. And I think that comes down to team culture. Team culture is so much more important than any tool you implement. You got to have the culture behind it. So, anyway, until next time, have fun testing.